The 80s gave us some of history's most iconic movies. Star Wars, Terminator, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and hundreds more dazzled audiences with their daring heroes and exciting special effects. Unfortunately, those special effects were often very expensive and it would take teams of experts weeks or even months to complete a single shot. This made it very difficult for small-scale filmmakers to go out and create their own fantasy worlds. The good news is, it's not the 80s anymore, and filmmakers of today can use their home computers and inexpensive software to create a whole host of different visuals for their productions. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly what I'll be doing in this video. One of my favorite films from this era is Ghostbusters. The concept, the acting, and of course the effects are all on point for the time. But, it's been a very long time since that movie came out, and a lot has changed since then. For example, the original film cost $30 million to make, which is over $83 million in today's money. But as a college student, I don't have either of those sums of money, so I'm challenging myself to recreate an iconic Ghostbusters effect that costs $0 to make and doesn't require me to leave my college dorm. And what better effect to try than the iconic particle beam? What the hell are you doing? The goal here is to illustrate how much more accessible VFX tools have become to the modern home movie maker, and how those very tools are that much better than their professional counterparts of yesteryear. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The original process for creating these effects was pretty complex. Visual artists would take distorted footage of explosions and combine it with hand-drawn elements of energy to create a style that they referred to as rubberized light. They would then chemically overlay that onto the original footage, thus creating the particle beam effect. While these effects were cutting edge for the time, there are three main issues that take away from their overall realism. Number one, the footage had to be stable, otherwise it would float around in a way that really wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. From a creative standpoint, this could significantly restrict the filmmakers in creating a scene with a lot of energy. Number two, you'll notice that the objects in the scene are not realistically impacted by the brightness of the beam. Now, this is pretty obvious as there was no energy beam flying through the set on the day, but it does take away from the effect's ability to be grounded in reality. And number three, the beam itself looks a little bit cartoonish because it doesn't generate a realistic bloom that you get when something that bright is shown into a camera. Today, we have access to tools that can address each and every one of these issues. So, with the power of technology, I can address all of these points and hopefully create a more realistic effect. Let's get into it. The first step to any visual effect shot is planning. I knew that I wasn't going to be able to use a real life location, so I decided to just create my own using a free 3D graphics software called Blender. While this is a slightly more labor-intensive way of doing things, it was the most straightforward way to create that realistic lighting I was talking about earlier. The first step I took was to set up all my green screen and lights. But Joe! I hear you asking. What do you mean, green screen and lights? Normal people don't just have green screen and lights just laying around. Okay, fair point, hypothetical audience member. The average person probably doesn't want to shell out their hard-earned money on all of this random film equipment. But if they did, they would find that this gear probably isn't quite as expensive as one might think. At least not by the $30 million standard. Is that fair? Fine. Awesome. Anyway, most of the time, the aggressive overhead lighting of an Emerson College dorm would make for some pretty atrocious lighting setups. To counteract this, I've decided to try to build out a spooky hallway with some aggressive overhead lighting that will hopefully blend with my green screen footage enough to address the issue. With that in mind, I took the crappiest prop in cinema history and recorded a few takes of myself shooting some non-existent ghosts. Shout out to my displaced roommate who shined light on my face. Now that we have that footage shot, I can break down this green screen setup behind me, my roommates get to leave the room again, and I get to start the editing process. Transition time. Once I had the footage in my computer, I looked at each take and found the one that I liked the best. Then I went through and isolated the green background, which I then removed using After Effects. Over in Blender, I built out a super temporary, super rough block out of my scene that I could use to experiment with different camera animations. Once that was pretty much locked in, I went through and replaced all the temporary stuff with realistic walls, doors, trash, etc. Moving camera? Check. Time for some lighting. 
I knew that it would be easier to create the final beam in After Effects, but the scene in Blender did need some sort of light source to interact with. To address this issue, I created this glowing red spaghetti noodle that A, would not show up in the final render, and B, would cast light throughout the scene in a way that a big rubbery laser would. Realistic lighting? Check. In the end, the hallway background took about 22 full hours to render out in its entirety. That was admittedly a lot longer than I was hoping for, so the pressure was definitely on to get this shot done. The final piece of this puzzle was the theme itself. Personally, I like the color scheme from more recent iterations of this effect, so I decided to base my version around that. I created this 2D video of the beam, which I combined with the background and the green screen footage from earlier. Finally, I created some glow and lens flares to help tie the whole thing together. Accurate light bloom? Check. After some final tweaks and sound design, the shot was finally done. Here is the result. There you have it, a fully homemade Ghostbusters effect made from the comfort of my dorm. Personally, I'm pretty excited about how it came out. It's important to remember that I didn't make this video to take shots at the original film. The fact is, it's an awesome movie for a number of reasons, including those 80s effects that we all know and love. Rather than focusing on perfect, glossy realism, these filmmakers created a compelling story and iconic world that is instantly recognizable today. For me, it's just very exciting to see how much power has moved from the big studios down to pretty much anybody who wants to just go out and create a film. People get to tell their stories today the way they want to, more so than we've ever seen before. It's a very exciting time to be alive in the world of home filmmaking, and I'm just excited to see where it all goes. I've been Joe Burke, and thank you so much for watching. Yeah!